and as part of the government's solution to the Atkinson court case. Mr Chairman. I call the Honourable Annette King. Mr Chairman, this is the, uh, the major part of the bill, um, the part where we ought to have a lot of information, where we ought to be very clear in this House as to what we are voting on what the impact is going to be on the many uh, disabled people who this bill will affect. And I was hoping that maybe the Minister would have started to answer some of the questions that have been raised by this side of the House. We've had the usual speeches from the government, I move that the question be now put, and we've had very little contribution other than that, and one contribution from the Minister for the whole day. We started this debate at nine o'clock this morning, or thereabouts, and the minister made the contribution that he has to make with the first and second reading, reading out his speech, and he has sat mute in that chair until a few moments ago and did not answer a single question raised by this side of the House. This is our only opportunity, Mr Chairman, to be able to find out how the bill will work. In, in, if the minister can't answer it, and obviously he's not in the chair anymore, so he's not there to answer it, we're going to have to rely on Mr Woodhouse to answer the questions. Or maybe Dr Hutchison knows the answers to the questions. But I suspect he's been kept in the dark as well. Otherwise, tell me this. What are the operational details of this policy? Who does it affect? How, how do we define a person of high and very high need? These are really important questions. And you know why we can't get the answers? Because the minister informed the media yesterday, not the parliament, but he informed the media yesterday that they haven't worked out the operational details of this bill and the operational details of this policy will not be finalised, still to being finalised, and information on how and when people can be assessed for eligibility will be available when do you think? Will it be this afternoon? Could it be on Monday? Could it be, could it be in the next month? No, it's in September this year. That is when the operational details of this very important policy that's been rammed through Parliament with no scrutiny from the public will be available. So do we know who will be defined as high and very high needs? Can the Minister please tell us today who these people are? Are they people, people with a motor neuron disease? Are they people with mus muscular dystrophy? Are they people with severe physical and neurological disabilities? Are they people who have got um, mental, mental illness? Are they people who have got uh, needs for palliative care? They're terminally ill. Who does this bill cover? Why do we not have that information? The operational details are absolutely crucial to knowing what we are passing. And the sheep opposite are going to all vote yes, and not one of them can tell us the operational details of this policy. That is shameful, Mr Chairman, absolutely shameful. Why would we be rushing through a piece of legislation when the work has not been done? And I'll tell you how we know the work wasn't done. Because the regulatory impact statement arrived on the floor of this House today most of the important stuff blanked out, which is a very much a sign of a rushed piece of policy work and a rushed piece of legislation. The Minister did not want this part of the bill going out to the public because it's this part of the bill that people would have questioned. They would have said how it's going to work, which, who, which of our family members are affected by this. There would have been hard questions for the Minister to answer and he did not want to face them. So I think it is disgraceful, Mr Chairman, that we do not have the operational details of this policy. The Minister himself, in his very short contribution, after the many hours we've been debating it, mentioned the technical advisory group. Well, the technical advisory group was a very narrow group indeed. In fact, we heard from the people who do the caring, 
People from Carers New Zealand, and I raised uh, earlier on, I think in my second, uh, second uh, reading of the speech, uh, did any of the members opposite meet with Carers New Zealand? Did they know them, Mr. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Chairman? I call the Honourable Annette King. Had they met with them? Did they know anything about an organisation that works with thousands of carers across New Zealand and have got a very good handle on what is going on? Well, you would have thought that they would have quite a major impact on the technical advisory group. In fact, they had very little, very little impact at all because the government didn't have any engagement in the, with the carers in the policy design or the systems that were to be used. They got one person on the technical advisory group, and you know what her role was, Mr Chairman? Her role was to respond to a series of questions from the Ministry of Health. That was her role. How could that be considered as an input into policy development? Ring her up and say, what do you think about this? But where is the real input that you would expect from carers in New Zealand? And that is the sort of feedback that we have been getting since we started to debate this bill. The truth comes out eventually. Even when a, min when a minister wants to ram through a piece of legislation, wants to restrict debate, to keep it tight so that people can't really see what's going on, feed the manure, eventually, it comes out. And members of this House have been receiving the same emails that I have been receiving. So we have moved a number of supplementary order papers to this particular part of the bill. And I think some of them really go to the heart of what people have been saying. One in particular is that we say, uh, we move, and my, my very good colleague Ruth Dyson has moved these amendments, that we amend clause 4 with a new section 70D3C and insert any lower rates set may not be lower than the minimum adult rate of wages payable to workers, set under the Minimum Wages Act 1983. I challenge any member there to stand up and tell this House and the people of New Zealand and those who care for the most disabled people in our society that they should not be paid a rate similar to other carers in New Zealand. Stand up and say their worth, their work is not valued enough to pay them a similar rate to other carers. The Ministry in their report said that they ought to be paid around $16 an hour and this government has said they will be paid 13.75. These people aren't working uh, just a 40-hour week. That's what they're going to be paid for. They are working seven days a week, 24 hours a day, except for the brief times that they get some respite care. I say to the members opposite, don't vote to only pay them the minimum wage. Vote to have them have a fair uh, wage a fair wage for looking after their family members. And, and I will be absolutely astounded if they can go out of this House, go back to their constituencies and say the carers of the most disabled people in New Zealand are worth the minimum wage only. Don't worry that you do a 24-hour a day, seven-day-a-week job. You are only worth that and you're damn lucky to get it because we didn't really want to give it to you anyway. And if you read the Minister's own press statement, you get the flavour of where he comes from. He says that most New Zealanders expect families to look after their children. Well, most New Zealanders do. But there are, Mrs Tolley, some children that are adults that do need more looking after because they, are, they have very high needs and they are disabled. And why would we treat them in this way? So I would have to say to Mrs Tolley, who has been smirking and laughing over there because it's not very important to her. She's busy chasing, um, she's busy chasing police eating hamburgers at a cut price rather than the real issues. Why would we treat these people differently? So I say to, this, to the members of it, there are a number of supplementary order papers. Get out of your seats, get a copy of them, have a read and maybe show some of your own internal fortitude and vote for what is right. Not what you've had written down on your research notes, not what you have been told, 
uh, uh, what they have been told, Mr Chairman, uh, to say and vote for. Uh, this, I believe, has been a shameful process, uh, and the Minister is not even in the chair now to answer questions when he ought to be. I call the Honourable Ruth Dyer.